your foxy writer, Brandy Ackerley, bringing you a world of saturated color. <laughs> and I am so pleased this week. You see, I've been considering moving my streaming up to two days a week. And earlier this month, the Genshin Impact gave me the impetus I needed to do it. <laughs> They offered streamers a chance for a few extra permissions if you could stream for a certain amount of time over a few weeks. Now, while the amount of permissions that we got from it is pretty low, I took the opportunity to see if I would enjoy moving, like, streaming to twice a week. And the final answer is that I really, really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, So from now on, I'm going to be streaming twice a week. Um, I'm going to be playing around with the days to see if I get, like, more of an audience on different days. I And I'll be expanding the games I'm playing. That's more important. Uh, one day a week will probably still be Genshin Impact. Because, like, I am absolutely loving that game. <laughs> like, seriously, um, I make time to do a little bit. Like, in, at the very least, my dailies. Every day now. <laughs> Ah, but I would like to get back and finish Plants vs. Zombies. Oh, 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 and I need to play a game or two of, like, Don't Starve, because Don't Starve has a new character, and I really want to try her. <laughs> and I may as well try her on stream. <laughs> oh, but I want to start playing other games, too, uh, specifically, like, Subnautica and Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh, 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 and I have to show you guys Journey. Journey is one of my favorite games. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I will be starting with those. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies will be this week, and then I think Don't Starve will be for the next, like, maybe week or two after that? While we try the new character? I don't know. I'm gonna see. <laughs> I'm gonna see. At the very least, this week, Plants vs. Zombie. Now, like I said, I'm going to be playing around also with the days I stream on. So, I will be putting out a weekly schedule. Um, one that I promise will be out each Sunday from now on. <laughs> now, I expect that I will settle into a pattern after like a month or, you know, maybe two at the most. I, I really can't see it taking two months. Uh, but yeah, a couple of, a couple of weeks at least. Um, just while I see what days my community prefers. <laughs> and I may start playing with the time of day as well. Mm, but right now, right now, I'm only thinking about keeping, like, the same times, since it works just best with my current schedule. I might change it later if I get, like, people asking about it. <laughs> so, um, that was a lot, but thank you for attending my TED Talk. <laughs> ah, now let's get to the actual read-along. Okay, so the story so far, uh, Richard had left his rooms after Kazunaha had left. Um, and he went to meet with some less-than-reputable members of the dance community. <laughs> uh, the criminal element, as it was, in his opinion, were willing to deal, and Richard found out where the men that had attacked him had said they came from. Uh, he additionally found out that the leader had lost a member of his family when the others hired him to deliver a message to another member of theirs outside of town. So Richard now knows that those chasing him aren't far behind. And he has a decision to make. Flee he damn or stay in search for treasure. <laughs> ah. Now, on with the story. <laughs> okay, now let me just pull up my book here. Ready? Perfect! Perfect! <laughs> okay. Having Deckard making her breakfast on her majority day had been a very pleasant fantasy when Kazunaha had been dating him. He'd been shirtless after they'd enjoyed their night of passion, and she'd be hovering over his shoulder, grinning from ear to ear while he cooked. It was her majority day, and Deckard was making her breakfast. Nothing else was right. For one, in her fantasy, he'd still be dating her, and hadn't had his irritating girlfriend joining them. So, you managed to get yourself kicked out of your own house. Impressive, Tiani said. Kazunaha glared. I wasn't kicked out. I left. Decker turned around. He wasn't frowning, but he had one eyebrow raised, 
and she immediately felt chastised. She was a guest, and here only at his mercy. Well, if she was lucky when she came back, wildly successful, she wouldn't have to stay here. She would have enough money to take her own room at the Koi while she figured out what she was going to do if Himiko did go through with the threat. Decker brought a plate of eggs, toast, oatmeal, and dried berries to the table. Kazunaha slid two of the eggs onto her plate. Tieni glared at her. The one who cooks gets fed first. Then, his girlfriend, visitors get what's left. Kazunaha seethed. She hadn't done anything to mend the rift between her and Deckard. How could she? He'd never asked anything of her since he'd found her in the arms of that sailor, Quan. Uh, despite the sudden roil in her stomach that made her lose her appetite, she kept the eggs on her plate. It would have been rude to put them back. Be nice, Tiani. She's still my guest, Deckard said, as he leaned down and kissed the other woman. Her arms curled around him invitingly. You shouldn't have to cook more before you even sit down to eat, Tiani countered into his lips. Kazunaha's appetite evaporated. Screw the propriety. She pushed the eggs onto his plate with her fork. Actually, I don't think I'm hungry. Deckard sat down with a sigh, most likely of relief. Do you have any extra clothes with you? She hadn't brought her bag from Richard's. Stupid, that. She should have taken it with her, but she had known it would be safe there, and she thought she could simply wear the dress until she could get to the inn. Ah. <sighs> Now, with Jack's clothes scratching at her skin, she regretted her choice. Also, she didn't understand why he would wear clothes made of such rough cloth. I left my bag at the inn. I have to see Richard today anyways, so I'll grab it then. She would have to check what she hadn't packed. She'd been mostly ready to go, but she had expected to go over everything once more. She knew that she'd left her boots at home assuming that she'd wear them the days she'd left and that they would be her footwear for the entire trip. <sighs> she'd have to buy another pair, even if they would be uncomfortable as sin while she worked them in. Good. When will you be heading out? Tiani said. Deckard closed his eyes, sighing heavily. Kazunaha bit her lip. Surely Richard must have woken up by now. She stood. I... I'll go now. She was not running away. This was a tactical retreat. She preferred to frame it that way. Perhaps she could find a room elsewhere if she couldn't leave tonight. Deckard was her failsafe, but she shouldn't rely on him anymore. It was clear he thought that she was nothing but a father. Make time to talk to your sister, Deckard told her. Tell her to let you back into your house, Tiani muttered. Kazunaha closed her eyes for a moment. I doubt that my sister has even registered that I'm gone, Deckard. Since she hadn't stayed with Richard, her sister would have no issues, even if she was angry at Kazunaha for staying for the night. On the other hand, it wouldn't be the first time Kazunaha had stayed out for the night. Not even the first time at this house. She glanced Deckard's way. His expression suggested that, her sister's inattention notwithstanding, she'd better make time. Her hand had just touched the knob when Deckard spoke. Whether you find a place for tonight or not, you'll be welcome here, Kazunaha. Kazunaha wasn't sure if that feeling in the pit of her stomach was relief or frustration. She wondered if Tieni would still be there. She opened the door in a rush and almost ran into Richard. He was raising his hand as if to knock. Richard? she asked stupidly. He held up her backpack. I was hoping you'd listened and decided to stay at our illustrious healer's home. You suggested that, Deckard said, as he pushed his plate back and stood. Richard pushed his way in and put Kazunaha's bag into her hands. His grin was nearly ear to ear. Of course. Who made breakfast? I did. You've been resting? Deckard asked. 
Richard sat down at the table in front of her plate. I've been in bed every moment that I'm not helping Kazunaha plan this trip. Kazunaha couldn't believe his audacity. Having your company join you in bed hardly counted as resting. Certainly Deckard wouldn't have considered it so. Kazunaha couldn't deal with this anymore. Deckard, may I use the healing room to change? Deckard gestured her away. I'll check on you before you leave then. You didn't seem to be having any trouble carrying that bag. She closed the door behind her and checked, raising an eyebrow in disgust. She only had two robes, blue and gray, one pair of thick socks, three sets of underwear, and a breast binder packed. It was a start, but not enough. She thanked the gods that she had packed her sturdiest clothes, at least. The material was cotton instead of silk, thick, and had no excess frills or stitching. They were some of the most boring things she owned, but they would survive the trek that her nicer ones wouldn't. Silk may be hardier, but not with the frills and embroidery, or the emphasis of fashion over functionality. She would still want her wool overcoats, if she could get them along with her boots and at least two more robes if she could. By the time she finished changing, Richard was finishing his plate. He smiled at her wickedly as she walked into the middle of their conversation. Is the priestess that strict? he asked Deckard. Deckard shrugged but didn't say anything. Kazunaha winced. Uh, apparently they decided to talk about embarrassing stories from her childhood. And of all of them... To bring up the Presha one? She and Presha had never seen eye to eye, even before the incident with the frog. To this day, she still wouldn't accept any of Kazunaha's apologies. Tiani gave Kazunaha a scathing look. She sounds like a woman of impressive taste. I'll have to introduce myself. So much for hoping they hadn't been talking about her. We should get going, Richard. He nodded. Of course. Deckard? Tiani answered before Deckard could. Just get her out of here. You can come back later for him to look you over. It took another moment, but they left. <gasps> okay! <laughs> so let me just head back over here and put the book down. Perfect! Perfect! <laughs> Ah, now, the only other thing I want to mention today is that I have a collab coming up soon. <laughs> soon being Monday evening. Um, I'll probably be starting around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I haven't figured out what that is in Pacific yet, but keep an eye out for my schedule. I promise that I will have the final time on there. Uh, for those of you who know her, I've mentioned her before, I'll be collabing with Venus Variation. <laughs> Another VTuber. Uh, we are going to be talking V-Roid outfits and clothing and fashion, probably some character design and maybe even some current events, <laughs> if time permits. Hmm. At any rate, uh, it should be a blast. I can't wait. And I'll be showing off the work that I have done on what will end up being my V-Roid Halloween costume. <laughs> so if you're interested in seeing what that is, you will want to be there. <laughs> I will share the link to her Twitch stream in the description below. And of course, like on all of my uh on all of my places in like social media on the day of the actual collab. <laughs> oh, and I hope I'll see a few of you there. Oh. Well, that's going to be it from me today. <laughs> ah, I will see you guys on Friday when I post my Genshin Impact video, or sooner than that, if you're coming to my streams, okay? 